Good evening. Tonight, I'm going to tell you a personal story about my sabbatical. A sabbatical is a time for a teacher or a professor to rest, take a break from teaching, and focus on professional development. They are common in colleges and much less common in high schools. But Millbrook School believes that they are important, and I completely agree. However, because I was away on sabbatical last year, that means many of you don't know me. So hi, I'm Ms. McWright. I teach photography in the art department. I do interior design for the school. I'm a driver of the day on Thursdays, so please, no accidents tonight. And I have five delightful advisees. I'm married to Mr. Smith, and Ms. Clark is my best friend. I am an introvert, which means I enjoy quiet, and I usually recharge my batteries alone. I have a small number of close friends and family members who I love and who love me. I am a visual person. Both my parents are artists, and so am I. When I was younger, I was a nerdy, weird kid, and I didn't know how to fit in. And I only stopped being a nerdy, weird kid when I became a nerdy, weird adult. I was a serious painter in high school and during the first part of college, but later I decided to focus on photography, which was my father's profession. I taught art at Don Stewart School in Albany, New York, and at Grace Church in Chapin in New York City before coming to Millbrook 11 Septembers ago. I loved Millbrook right away. The school had better art facilities than any other school I've attended or taught at, and better yet, kind students and teachers. Ms. Clark befriended me a month into my first year by saying, I think we should be friends. This is a move I highly recommend. Two years later, Mr. Smith started working at the school too. I was loved, and I loved what I did. But even today, as a grown-up, nerdy adult, I sometimes feel like an outsider. It's not just a Millbrook thing, but it is definitely true here, too. Sometimes I think I would feel different in the middle of an extremely quiet introvert convention. But then I remember that there could never be such a thing because no one would show up. Still, that's my vibe. Two years ago, I decided to apply for a sabbatical, but I didn't know exactly what to do. Do I spend a year alone? making art, wondering if I still know how to make friends? Do I strike out into the world and try to find that elusive introvert's convention? And if I do find an introvert's convention, will that just make me weirder? Aaron Sorkin writes TV shows, and I remember hearing him talk about plot and character development. He said something like, challenging situations are great, because they provide lots of options for your characters. The only thing your characters should not do is nothing. So, without knowing the right answer, I picked one. I took an internship at an architecture firm on Union Square in New York City, and I pushed away my worry that this was a strange thing for a photography teacher to do, and my worry that my choices might lead me to be feeling even more different than everyone else. I will talk about my sabbatical in a minute, but I want to reflect on today first. Here I am one year later, back at Millbrook and finishing a typical Thursday. Today I taught a digital photography class. I talked with colleagues and an advisee. I picked up repaired curtains for Mr. Downs' office and started brainstorming a furniture layout for the first floor entrance to Prum Dormitory. I made small steps towards small goals. I wrote in my planner, added to a to-do list. At the end of the day, I walked from east to west across Flagler Quad, and my posture changed. My spine straightened, I looked up at the grand view, the locust trees, the brick and white painted wood dormitories, the chapel, the evening sky. When I entered this building and crossed through the threshold right there, 
I looked up at a barrel ceiling at least four or five times taller than I am. This room offers me perspective. I'm not a religious or spiritual person, and I don't come here to pray. I come to this space because it helps me see the big picture. I look up and around, and I think about the times I've been in here to hear speakers and performers, to find out who is the Zooey of the week, to learn about when and where Chess Club will meet, to start 11 years with first night and convocation, to end 10 years with last night. I've seen my closest friends get married here, and I've cried and mourned horrible loss here. Today, and every time I come to the chapel, I remember the strength of the community that I've chosen to live in. And I remind myself that this community chose me too. This community chose you too. There is a theory in architecture that explains why the chapel has this effect on me. That theory is called refuge and prospect. And it is the idea that every great building provides, or should provide, either refuge, that is comfort, protection, safety, or prospect, that is awe, power, perspective. Large rooms with dramatic views like the chapel, our Chelsea Morrison Theater, or Grand Central Station make us feel the power of opportunity and new possibilities. These are spaces of prospect. Other spaces provide refuge. They protect and enclose us. You might find refuge on Millbrook's campus in a cozy booth in the barn, or in the small basement common room of Clark Dormitory. Some architects aspire to create both prospect and refuge in the same space, like how it feels when you sit in the highest boxes of the theater. You can see the big view, feel the sense of opportunity, but you are safe, close to the exit, and protected by the walls around you. Prospect and refuge. So last year, when I decided to turn my curiosity about architecture into a year-long commitment and professional experience, it was a decision to search for prospect and opportunity, even though at times my brain felt like it was screaming at me. Find refuge. In September 2021, with a sabbatical award in hand and a rough plan for the year, I left my life as a teacher. I moved into a fifth floor walk-up apartment with a bed, a chair, a fresh set of towels, and not much else. To get to work, I took the train into the heart of Greenwich Village, and I walked the rest of the way to Union Square, where I worked at G.P. Schaefer Architect, a traditional architecture and design firm headed by Gil Schaefer. Gil is arguably the best respected classical architect in the country. He is also an alum of Millbrook School, class of 1980. And would you believe it, it turns out that high-end classical architecture firms pretty much only hire introverted, awkward art nerds who draw quietly all day and recommend books to each other. I found my convention. Early on, I made a secret pledge to read every architecture book my new colleagues recommended or mentioned. I asked them to be my friends, Ms. Clark style, and many agreed. I was enchanted by the way that architects talk about buildings, how they refer to the face of the building as a human face, with windows for eyes and a roof as a hat. I noticed that architects like to ask what the building wants, as if the building has a say in the matter, and I love that too. Does this building want a French door here? Does this room want a lower ceiling? At the end of the fall semester, the firm hosted a holiday party. The party started at 5.30 p.m., and by 5, half the office was done with work and changing into ugly holiday sweaters. Gil, our boss, went desk to desk to encourage those of us still working to join the party. When he got to my desk, I told him I was having a problem communicating with a vendor and getting that vendor to understand what we wanted. Gil listened to my issue, and he said to me, let's send him a drawing. That way he'll understand what we mean. Visual communication, be still my beating heart. 
Gil grabbed a Sharpie, left my desk, and in a few minutes later, returned with a drawing, which I scanned, emailed to the vendor, and then I shut down my computer and joined the party. One hour later, Gil, our introvert in chief, apologized that he had to leave the party early for another engagement, wished everyone happy holidays, and slipped away in the elevator to be alone. Others quickly followed suit. In Gil and in my new architect colleagues, I often saw my own reflection, including, if I'm being honest, some of my more unusual qualities validated like the most normal thing in the world. Mr. Downs is a fabulous boss. I mean that, but he does not send me drawings to explain how riled up he is about Pomfret Day. And he is never, never the first one to leave a party. In my year away, I was surrounded by people who love quiet work, who talk about buildings as if they were or are sentient beings, and who always have great book recommendations. I realized, too, that I loved their weird parts the most. Everyone was awkward, nobody really felt like they fit in, and so everyone did, kind of, sort of, not really, but yeah. And eventually, I thought that maybe I could let myself feel that way about me. Maybe whether I could fit in or not isn't the right question. I left Millbrook anticipating a year of prospect, looking for the grand view and for new opportunity. I spent my time in beautiful new spaces. I lived in the big city, worked at a big deal architecture firm, spotted famous people on the street, and visited construction sites that would someday become the homes of even famous-er people. And at the end of the day, I realized that I had found both prospect and refuge, because these experiences and these people helped me find what I really needed, which was perspective about myself. Returning to Millbrook this fall, I promised myself that I would visit the chapel every week and remember this perspective and way of seeing myself in this community. This is the community that I picked. This is the community that picked weird, nerdy me. If any part of this story feels familiar to you, if you ever worry about not belonging or feeling different, or think about changing yourself or changing your environment to make yourself fit better, I encourage you to find your spot of prospect and refuge on campus, a place that helps you see the big picture and think big thoughts, and also a place where you feel safe and secure. It could be the chapel balcony when it is full of people, or the first pew when it's empty and quiet. Your prospect and refuge could be the top bleacher on the upper fields on a big game day, or maybe it's the bench on the very top of Ski Hill. It could also be the bend in School Road with those wide views of marsh and hills. Find your place and know that it and the perspective it offers will always be there for you. When you're feeling off or uncertain, go there. If you need this to be stronger medicine, take a friend, an advisor, a coach, someone who cares for you. Remember that you picked Millbrook, and Millbrook picked you. It picked the whole you. And this community knows what we, I, sometimes forget, that some of the best parts of you are the weird parts. Colleagues, I am addressing you now. So few people apply for sabbaticals. In some years, that number is zero. The deadline is coming up in November, and the truth is that I am more fearful and change-averse than most of you. And if I look away from Jarrett, I can say I am more change-averse than all of you. <laughs> you are ready for this. You are loved, and the prospect and refuge of a sabbatical could change your perspective on life. Thank you, Melbourne School, for the year away that brought me closer. It changed everything for me. Thank you ev to everyone who loved me through it. To everyone in this room tonight, I hope you find your place of prospect and refuge. 
and have a wonderful evening.